So inside your exhaust, there's a tiny smelly thing. I call it a smelly thing because it, it smells the amount of oxygen that's coming out of the engine. So we're talking specifically about the O2 sensor. We're just going to get a feel for what the O2 sensor is, how important it is, and the typical problems that you get when the O2 sensor starts playing up. So the O2 sensor basically is a little electrical generator inside the exhaust that produces a current typically between 0.9 and 0.2 volts, just depending on how much oxygen there is in the exhaust. So at its core, you've got a zirconium ceramic bulb, which is coated with layers of platinum. This element acts as a chemical catalyst and allows oxygen ions to move between the exhaust gases and a reference air chamber inside the sensor. And that affects the voltage that is emitted to the car's computer to make the fuel adjustment necessary. The operating temperature of an O2 sensor is typically somewhere around 600, 650 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that point, it starts generating a voltage signal that is useful to the ECU. So O2 sensors typically measure an oxygen content of somewhere between 0 and 25% of the air, which is generally all you need to get the engine to run efficiently and smoothly. So O2 sensors aren't technically measuring the oxygen concentration. They're measuring the difference between the amount of oxygen in the exhaust and the amount of oxygen in the air that is going into the engine. The voltage builds up in the O2 sensor due to the transportation of oxygen ions. A lean mixture causes a low voltage because there's an excess of oxygen in the exhaust. So some engines have a heated O2 sensor, which just allows it to operate more quickly. Most engines operate in a closed loop, so they stop using the O2 sensor when the engine has first started up. The fuel mixture is generally rich and that helps the engine to warm up more quickly. And then as the exhaust temperature rises, and the temperature of the O2 sensor rises, it starts giving those readings back to the ECU and then it can start this loop process where it starts to trim the fuel as required to keep things running efficiently. What it does is adjust the amount of fuel that goes into the engine to just maintain a safe output level. If there's too much fuel going in, you'll get a higher reading toward the 0.9 volts level and that will tell it to back off on the fuel delivery. At the other end, if it starts running lean, dropping down to the 0.2 volt mark, the engine will start to rich up the mixture, send more fuel into the engine. So it needs to do this because the engine's efficiency, the way the engine burns fuel varies depending on the load of the engine, the RPMs, the efficiency, the quality of the fuel, the temperature of the air that's going into the engine. Different temperature air will carry different amounts of oxygen. So this is why engines need to make these constant adjustments to the fuel. So we would call that the fuel trim. So a lot is going on within the exhaust system. So typically a modern engine will have a catalyst in the exhaust and it'll have an O2 sensor before the catalyst and also one after the catalyst. So it can measure the effectiveness of that catalytic converter and just make sure that the emissions are within whatever the manufacturer has set as a tolerance is. So it can make adjustments to the way the engine is burning fuel to help the environment effectively. So some engines have more than just two O2 sensors. If you've got a dual bank of exhaust straight away, you're talking about a doubling up of the O2 sensors. So even in some engines with just one exhaust system, you may have more than two O2 sensors. So they're doing an important job, but if they become silted up, fouled up or start to degrade, they effectively give wrong readings to the ECU. What's the effect on the performance of the engine when this actually happens? Well, you'll notice hesitancy, flat spots. The engine might be running rich or running lean. You might have an error code flashing up on your dashboard to say that the engine is running outside of its normal parameters and it forces it to go into a limp home mode where you're limited to the RPMs and the power output of the engine. So I have known bad quality fuel to degrade the O2 sensors. They wear out over time and become less efficient. So you can actually test the voltage range of an O2 sensor with a voltmeter to just get a feel on whether it's working within its accepted parameters or not. And I've known people to replace expensive components in the engine when actually it was just the O2 sensor in the exhaust that needed to be replaced. So nearly two thirds of vehicles that failed to meet the emissions regulations needed 
an O2 sensor. It was nothing more serious than just having a bad O2 sensor. So maybe the engine was being forced to run rich. Now, the problem you've got with a modern catalyst and running rich is that the rich fuel that doesn't get burned is entering the catalyst. And that's causing the catalyst to heat up far beyond its designed operating parameters. So that can actually melt the catalyst structure itself. It can degrade the performance of it, or it can just cause soot to build up within the catalyst. And if you've got soot on the surface of the catalyst, it's no longer able to help the reaction and your emissions levels will shoot up. So depending on where you live, they test for different things in the exhaust, but a lot of catalyst problems can be caused by having a bad O2 sensor. So often you'll get an error code when you download the diagnostics from the OBD2 port. And if that indicates that there's abnormal readings coming from the O2 sensor, do investigate it, don't ignore it. If you're getting flat spots, hesitancy or poor running, it could well be down to some issue with the O2 sensor. And it really is something you want to address early on. It's a relatively cheap part. It's a relatively simple job to do on most engines. So getting that sorted can save those big bills further down the line. So I hope this video has just been useful to you. You've learned a little bit about O2 sensors, how they work and what to look out for when they start to play up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. If you could boot that like button, that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.